Good afternoon. It is Friday, April 10th at 3 o'clock, and we are going to play with Flipgrid. Uh, our goal right now is in 30 minutes to give you a crash course in what is Flipgrid and how do we set it up? What does it look like and feel like from the student perspective? We'll start with that. And so you're, you're looking at the, the teacher side, so I'm logged in as a teacher. And I'd like to pull up, I started a new grid and I created a, a quick topic. And I, I wanna show you though, what it would look like from the student perspective. So you would share whatever it is with your students and then we'll open an incognito window, right? That means that you're not logged in. So when the student goes to your topic, right? You've shared a topic with the kids. Now they see your content and they can, they can play your video. It's a fun video on shoe verbs in Spanish. The guy's a little bit crazy and I kind of like a little bit crazy sometimes. Starts singing and he gets all uh, fun. Great little instructional video. Uh, talking about our learning objective of, of the week, right? It's focused on a singular objective. So good, so the directions were watch this instruction, and then I want you to record yourself, right? I answer the question, what are the three types of shoe verbs or irregular verbs in the present tense in the Spanish language? So here's an example of when, when we think about best practices and what we're trying to do, this would be an example of using Flipgrid as communicating the instruction, that online video, the video, and then that quick check for understanding following the input, following the video. Now we can use Flipgrid for a few different, in, in, in lots of different ways, but in this example, we're looking at, here's that instructional video, and then I want you to respond. I want you to tell me uh, or summarize for me, what was the objective? What, what did we learn about? So wonderful, when I scroll down here, <laughs> here's an example. My daughter was helping me in her mask, right? Because of our example of Corona example. Chewers, O, V, E, E to I, E, or maybe just E into I. So good. The point being that, that your students then can record their video. They can also, they have tools. They can draw on the screen directly, which is kind of cool. You don't have to use uh, the, the video camera. I can actually create kind of one of those flipped uh, video experiences, the, a whiteboard. I can use it as a whiteboard and draw and record uh, while, while I, as a response, which is pretty wonderful as well. You'll notice I was playing around with some of the different tools and I'll show you this in just a moment, but I, I, you can add emojis and even cover your face if you wanna cover your face. I can add different stamps. This, this wonderful at the top, actually an example of my teacher giving me some feedback um, and that all can see. So here's, here's that wonderful comment here. When you're done creating your video, then you can create a, a um, what do they call it? Uh, um, I forget what they call it, but you take a picture and, and then uh, that's, that's the image that shows up. So let's, let's try. And, and notice when I click on add a response, it's making me sign into Google. And that's not a problem for us, but just be aware that it's making us sign into Google. So great student at es5.org. And I suppose I won't share that. So once I get signed in, then now a difficulty is that it's asking to, to access my camera. And, and so Zoom has access to my camera right now. So um, when I say, yes, you can have my camera, it's gonna tell me, well, but we can't because Zoom has access to my camera right now, right? So I can't, I can't actually 
uh, create the response live, right? Um, and, and so that's too bad, but it does work. It works wonderfully. You can record and then um, you can add your emoji over your face if you want. You can draw over it and, and the like. So good, that's the student experience. I get to see what you shared. I get to then add some fun stickers and, and the like. Let's, let's look at so what- So as, yes. as a teacher, would you see all their responses here then? Yeah, good question. Let's go back to the, the teacher side. So here is that topic. And when I scroll down, it's going to show me the, my students. And okay. so this is student at ESU5, and then all of those responses would start, uh, uh, I would see them here. And this also is where I would be able to open up their response and provide oh. them with some feedback. Um, okay. So I can, in terms of feedback, I can record a video of myself responding that only the students, this specific student can see or I can reply with a comment uh, where all students can see. Also at the top here, this is where it says uh, that Spark video. So that means that I'm, I'm going to turn this student's response to my question into its own question for other students to respond to. So that's the, the spark video button there. So I, I think this student's response was outstanding and I want other students to respond to it. That would be that example. Now, now but stay with me for a second. Um, kids can interact with each other's video by clicking reply as well. So that they, when they click reply, then, then they'd be able to create a video response to this student's video. The difference though is that this would be, if you spark the video, that's the term, then it would create its own topic and, and, and it, would, it would have its own, then its own responses underneath it. As, a, as opposed to when I look over here, and so we got this, I can reply to it, and, and when I, and again, it's not gonna allow me, so I can import a video, great. Um, I doubt that I have a video that's gonna be short enough. Let's go to Zoom and see, I think, nope, let's come back, and is there, nope, nope, I don't have a quick video that's, <laughs> that's, that's gonna work. That's okay. Um, point being, kids can reply to each other, and then those responses would live with the, the response to the topic, right? As opposed to if I look at my student's response, then sparking it makes it its own question. There's okay. another option up here, and so I can feature the response. And so uh, that, that means it's starred, and, and I guess it communicates when I refresh here. It, it communicates that this is a high quality response, right? I've started. Um, I can also add this up here. And so this is called a vibe. So here, there's, when I'm looking at the student responses, we're talking about giving feedback in, in Flipgrid. So here's the feedback. When I go to edit, I can add a, an educator comment that will be seen by all of my students. So um, try again, <laughs> right? Try again, uh, or, or however it is you want to, to provide some feedback. Um, good. Also, you, you can use a grading rubric. Um, then you can have the rubric be whatever you want it to be. The, their basic feedback or the default feedback is giving feedback on their ideas and their performance. Um, but I can customize that to say um, anything I want and I can have a minimum score be zero and a maximum score be five or whatever it is you want. 
and then I can, when I look back at my responses, I'm going to update. So now when I go to edit, when I go to give feedback, I can see my anything comment here, right? This is the criteria I just added. And I can now give kids five points or however many points I want to give. Of course, I can give them text responses as well. And great. So this is, so when, when I create my topic and I press share on my topic, I can copy that link or I, I can share it directly into Google Classroom. Um, there, there's also a way, and I don't want to dive too deep into this right now, but inside of Canvas, I don't think I even want to try to demo it, but inside of Canvas, we, we can have the, we, you can connect Flipgrid to Canvas, and it takes about five steps. If you're interested in that, I recommend doing a quick Google search Flipgrid in Canvas, and it will walk you through. It's not hard to do, but it, it is a five or six step process to do. Um, so great, wonderful. Let's talk about our teacher dashboard for just a second. So here, here is what I see when I log in. And this default here is my grids. You can also look at my activity and you can see that of the grids that I have created, I have seven hours of total engagement. I'm, so isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I can look at my achievements in recent videos, and that's great. Um, the my grids, let's have a quick conversation on vocabulary. There are two different key terms in Flipgrid. Number one is grid. So a grid is kind of, I can think about it kind of like a classroom maybe, or maybe it's a specific subject, um, or maybe it's a specific chapter. So you might have a grid for a chapter. Um, but the point is that the grid is the parent to the topics. You can have as many grids as you want, that's the wall or the classroom, maybe, but the topics are the, the, the ways kids interact with you. So I can create a new grid, have a new, uh, so new grid today. And so when you create a new grid, it will ask you, how do you want your kids to log in? And this is kind of important. And so I recommend in our context that we're going to use a school email, great. And now when I say next, it's going to ask me what email addresses do you want to allow? It automatically put in that my at esu5.org is allowed because that's my email address. But let's say you're teaching a DL class and you have kids from three different school districts. So you would need to add at faircentral.net. And then now kids from Fair Central would be able to log in and, and respond. Or, or at the at, or it's VPS. Yeah, something weird. Yeah. And then I can say next. And now folks would be able to see my grid. So this would be the link that I would send to students to, to, to see my grid because, so it's gonna force me to log in, right? Because I told it to force me to log in, but because this is, this is my dummy student, so they can see my grid. So um, the grid, remember, is that wall and then this would show multiple topics, all of the topics. You can either share the grid like we just did, where kids can access however many topics you have, or you can share the specific topic, right? The specific question. Does that feel good, Deb? Yeah, I'm writing that down. Great. All right. So, so again, key terms. A, a grid is kind of like the, the category, and then the topic 
is the question. And, and so, so I wish I wish they'd rename that because I think about the grid is the grid yeah. is the, the bigger topic, right? But then they use the word topic to, for the actual interaction. So it's so a great. The grid is the category. You have to have a grid. You can't have a so topic. The, so my grid could be like algebra. Yes. And then my, my topic could be multiplying binomials or whatever. Yes. So, so let's do that. So I'm going to add a new topic, multiplying, multiplying binomials. Great. Okay. So when I create a topic, um, it allows, let's, let's go through some of our options here, and there's a lot of them. So, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> we're recording, so you'll have access to it later too. The, the okay. first one is the most important. How long do you want kids to be able to blab on about? Uh, and, and sometimes I actually like limiting, I mean, really the question is, if, if you give 30 kids 10 minutes each to talk, you might be looking at videos for quite some time. So yeah. potentially limiting how long they can talk. Uh, and so I can give a written prompt if I so desire, but then also I can add a, a video. So in my example that we saw with the guys playing a guitar, I pulled a video from YouTube, right? And, and, and so we can do that. We can also upload, um, uh, an image I can also pull from files. And so I want to go to more options here. I can add attachments. So if I have uh, uh, some, some sort of a file that I want kids to read, maybe instead of video input, right? I want them to read this thing first, right? When we think about uh, what that instruction might be, if we're using this as instruction, maybe it's a reading instead of a video uh, so I could add then uh, that that attachment great when I scroll down just a little bit and there are a lot of, a lot of options here uh, so video moderation do you want are, are, are we worried about students saying something inappropriate and if the answer is yes then I recommend turning this on that means that I have to approve the video before students are able to see the, uh, each other's responses, right? Um, also, here is where the default is that students are able to respond to each other. If you don't want that, then we can turn it off. If you do, great, we can leave it on. Um, I can also tell it that it's going to be scheduled, right? That you're going to be open on from here and then it will be frozen. Students won't be able to, to access it anymore after this time. Scrolling down. So great with the video features. And, and so it's a selfie, of course it's a selfie. That's the image at the end. When, you, when the student creates a response, they, they, that's the video. And then that image at the very end is the selfie. I can turn that off too. I can say, I only want a, a video. And, and so then students wouldn't be able to take that picture at the very end. I'm not sure why you would say only selfie because it's meant to be a video discussion board, right? But you could also yeah. only have kids have the image and not have any, any video. Um, good. So. You can edit the videos. I don't, I, mean, I don't know if you want to turn that off. I don't know if you need to turn that off, but here are some other options. Like I said, there's lots and lots of options. I, I, so I find it interesting that the default is that students can respond to each other with videos, but not like each other's videos. And but that's so that's another way we could have kids give feedback to each other is, is going in and liking. Great. When I scroll down just a little bit more, we're there at the bottom now. Here's where I set what that feedback is. Remembering that the default is ideas and performance. I can take I can take one of those off. It looks like, no, I can't with the default. You get both of them. I thought I could deselect, but I can't. 
And so then with the custom feedback though, I can uh, use whatever I've already created. And notice that we created this prior and it remembered that this is some feedback that I might want to use. Good. So when I click create, so it says great, it's ready. So now here's the link to that topic. So when I, and so let's, let's click on my grids again. So this is the new grid today. And here's my multiplying binomial grid. I can share, remember, I can share the grid, the entire category of algebra, or I can share the specific topic, that specific question as well. Um, and I can see it going both ways. Maybe you want to just share the grid with them. This is the kind of the classroom, right? The, the, the flip grid spot where all of my flip grid stuff is. Or maybe you don't want to do that. It would, let's, let's focus on multiplying binomials. This one idea right now, let's only share this thing. So great. That is creating a flip grid. We looked at it from the student side. We looked at providing the feedback and we created a grid as well as a topic. Let's scroll up to the top just a little bit. I, I like the ability to add co-pilots. That means having a second teacher in your classroom. Um, that, that might not be interesting for all of us, but maybe it is. Uh, so that's, that's an option. Uh, but then across the top here, we are on my grids. There's a lot of other ideas here too. And so one is called a mixed tape. A mixed tape might be, um, I don't know, a title might be funny student responses. Good. And so then I can create my mixed tape. And now I can add videos, but when I add videos, so what, what is this? So let's, let's look in. So here's, I don't think we have a response there yet, but I do have one from Corona. So I'm going to open it up and I can look at my student. I can add it to a mixed tape, to my funny student responses mixed tape and say, got it. So now under my mixtape, so my funny student responses, this is kind of like a grid that can pull topics from or student responses. It can pull student responses from multiple topics. So, so uh, when I open it up, then it's showing me here's this one funny response. I, I'm not exactly sure how you would use it. In, in your algebra class, right? Um, but it's, it's an option for you. Uh, let's, let's go back to my grids and pull in, do we have uh, responses? I know we've got responses here. So I can open this up and say, share this to a mixtape, add to my funny responses. Oh, that was funny, ha, ha, ha. And I can come back over here and say, Oh, here's another one, and uh, that one right there. That that response was so funny, and I and I, I can add it to my mixtape, and very good. But the point being, now you've seen from mul I had short hair uh, from multiple topics. I then can have more uh, the 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 mul the student responses, I'm trying to use the right vocabulary. So the student responses from multiple topics can live inside of one mixed tape. Good? That's a mixed tape. Grid pals is something that Flipgrid does is, is really kind of cool. Uh, there are teachers all over the world, 21, 20, almost 22,000 folks across the world so if I say I want to focus on middle school and I want to focus on math, it's got to be here, math, middle school math. And now I can see that in, it looks like, um, doesn't tell me what school, but, but good, somewhere in north central Nebraska, it looks about like Ansley, Nebraska. Um, we have this individual 
where you could then collaborate, right? That idea of having a co-pilot, your kids could, could work on some similar things. And so it's a way to find other individuals. And then when I select her, I believe there's a way I can invite her to, um, I, I can then start to interact with her. I can invite her to, to a grid with me. Great, that's grid pals. The disco library are some, some pre-created topics that you could pull into your grid. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm not sure that I would use this, but maybe you would. And I think it's great that I mean, it's a good spot to look for different examples of things that you might want to ask. At the top, once more, I can say, I want to focus on high school and I want to focus on math, and then I can even uh, search. But you're seeing that, so here are some ideas for, for what you might do with a with Flipgrid. Great, at the top here, and, and the last is shorts. Not on the bottom half of your body, but rather um, the shorts of videos. So um, there's, there's all sorts of great tools to create little short video snips, but Flipgrid allows you to do that too, just to record yourself and not necessarily have any student interaction. It's not, it's not a topic, it's not part of a grid, it's just a spot where then uh, your video lives and you could share a link to the video. So we've talked about shorts, the disco library, where, where there's lots of different ideas on how you could use Flipgrid, the, the grid pals where you could find somebody doing something similar, maybe engage kids uh, in some cross district, cross across the world, uh, interaction with others around similar topics, the mixed tapes where I can pull student responses from multiple topics into one spot, and then we spent a lot of time looking at the grids and, and, and remembering that the grid is the parent and then you can have as many topics under a grid as you want. You can also have as many grids as you want. So there's uh, about three years ago, two years ago, Microsoft purchased Flipgrid and what used to be paid features all became free. They made it all free, which is amazing and good on them. Um, so it used to be you could only have one or two grids, but now you can have as many grids as you want and you can have as many topics as you want. Uh, also, I'd highlight that, the, that if this wasn't enough of a getting started guide, there's a great guide. They do wonderful tutorials for you. And that is Flipgrid in a nutshell. I'm going to stop.